Yeah. Six o'clock, we'll call the meeting to order. We do have a quorum present. Mayor Council, tonight we have the final piece of the stormwater drainage utility. So, you know, you've uh, established or passed the ordinance that establishes the utility. Uh, you pass the ordinance that establishes the fee. This ordinance actually establishes the credit policy and an appeal process. We have it later on your agenda for approval. Uh, Keith and Jordan are going to walk you through the key components of that uh, first thing. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, this is, as, as uh, City Manager said, this is our third and hopefully final ordinance uh, dealing with the stormwater utility uh, rules ordinance. Quick status update. Um, City Manager just kind of kind of uh, stole this slide from me, but I'm going to go through it anyway. <laughs> uh, back in August, we, we came to you with a resolution that called for the public hearings. Um, and then in, uh, we had to publish all of those ordinances in the newspaper, and so all, uh, both of those ordinances, ordinances were published in full three times in the paper, and then, yes, on October 2nd, y'all uh, held the public hearings and passed both of those ordinances, uh, the first establishing the stormwater drainage utility and the second establishing at $4 per ERU and the equivalent $1.43 per thousand square, square feet of impervious area for the commercial uh, property. And we did establish that we will begin billing in the January uh, billing cycle on our, on our normal water bills. So the rules ordinance, it does establish that the Public Services Department uh, will administer the stormwater drainage utility system and the credit program. Uh, it defines the utility rate classes of single family residential and non-single family residential. It does create the ability for entities to apply for, for credits, so we will talk a little bit about the credits. The rules ordinance establishes the, the ability for it, and then we have an administrative directive that actually establishes the credit program. Uh, and it does outline the appeals process uh, uh, and the time for uh, any disputed charges. Just walking through this again, the, the single-family residential is a flat fee, $4 per ERU equivalent residential unit. And then with our non-single-family residential parcels, that's any commercial, industrial, institutional, governmental, basically anything that doesn't have one structure that's a single-family resident with one water meter. And that is based on the 1,000-square-foot on the in impervious area of $1.43 per 1,000 square feet. area of one dollar and 43 cents per 1000 square feet. Uh, stormwater credit program. I want to introduce you to Jordan Strickler. She is our environmental services manager out of the public services department and she and her staff have been instrumental in this program. They've spent countless hours determining uh, impervious areas for all of the parcels in town, uh, going over and, and establishing this credit program. She's also going to talk later on about the, the community outreach and they've got a big program ready to roll out basically as soon as this ordinance passes. And I'm going to introduce you to Jordan and let her take this over for a few minutes. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, as Keith said, I'm over in uh, public services. I'm the Environmental Control Services Manager, and I oversee our stormwater division. Um, tonight, before you, you have the rules ordinance that allows for the implementation of the stormwater utility credit program. And I want to talk a little bit about that program. So the stormwater utility program provides an incentive for tax uh, for rate payers um, to voluntarily implement implement stormwater management measures and it offers them a pathway for rate reduction. Uh, the program will be fully administered by um, over my staff over in public services. Uh, they'll be accepting applications, reviewing that, then collecting documentation, and then we'll coordinate with utility billing to get those credits applied. So for our non-single family residential properties, a maximum allowable credit of 50% uh, would be available for them. For our single family residential properties, they're going to be limited to that automatic credit of 25% uh, only if they live within the Denton County Levy uh, Improvement District. And I want to talk a little bit about the Denton County Levy Improvement District. Um, it's on the south side of town. Uh, it's about a thousand acres uh, that spans the city of Louisville and the city of Capel in Denton and Dallas counties. So properties within the district, uh, they're taxed, they uh, pay property taxes in those uh, that money is used for the maintenance of some of the drainage facilities within the district. Uh, however, there are still uh, still public city infrastructure for drainage that we have to maintain. 
Um, so we're proposing that this that properties within this district receive an automatic credit um, to kind of offset their additional property taxes. Uh, they would not be required to submit an application or to, or to do a renewal. Um, for our single family residential properties, this is the only credit that would be available um, by our administrative director. For our non-single family residential properties, uh, there are eight options. Um, some of them will require an application process. So the credits are based on best management practices and will require the documentation and self-reporting to city staff. Uh, each of the best management practices would be associated with allowable maximum percent credit and only uh, be applied to the previous area served. So if you remember earlier, I said 50% was the maximum allowable credit for our non-single family residential. Uh, there's no one category on here that allows for that 50%. So it would take a combination of a couple of them if they wanted to reach the total 50% maximum allow. Of the eight options, um, some of them are, are simple, such as the Adopt-a-Spot program or the parking lot sweeping. Um, we also have some more permanent structures, including detention or retention pond, zero discharge, and permanent structural controls. And these really focus on improving water quality and reducing water quantity. Uh, additionally, we've got student education and industrial facility, as well as that Denton County Levy Improvement uh, District credit. Uh, so some of the best management practices, I have a couple of examples up here. Um, we've got some of those permanent structural controls as I was talking about. We've got some of those uh, bioswells here at the Denton County, uh, new Denton County building that filter this uh, runoff from the parking lot. Here at Wayne Ferguson Plaza, we also have a, a different type of bioswale. Uh, and then at UTRWD, they actually have a stormwater pond that uh, serves as kind of a retention that also helps with the water quality based on the aeration and some of the additional vegetation. Down here is just an example of a, 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 a detention, <laughs> detention pond um, or a detention area that uh, kind of slows down that water and releases it at a, a steady rate. And he's going to talk about the appeals process. So the, the, the rules ordinance also establishes the appeals process. And, and um, uh, you know, when we roll this out, we're going to get a lot of phone calls. It's going to come in, <coughs> one, just because they get a bill and they're going to want to know what it is and why it is. And two, we're going to get people that want to object to the reason. They want to know the basis of their bill. So we're going to spend, Jordan and, and, and the rest of public services and probably utility billing and city manager's office and, and, and building services, a, a lot of people will be getting these calls. We're going to try to answer them as best we can. If people have disputes that they want us to look at, we're going to look at those. We're going to try to resolve these at the lowest possible level. But once we're established and we're moving forward, we are going to have a, a, a formal written appeals process. So uh, primarily, if somebody calls to complain and we can't um, take care of their complaint, we'll, we'll tell them that this is a, a process available to them. Um, they will have to. Um, uh, have one of these reasons for an appeal. This is what's listed in the ordinance that essentially uh, exempt property has been charged. So somebody might complain that uh, there's a, uh, some impervious area that's really not theirs. It's city street or, or sidewalk or something that we've exempted. Um, uh, or perhaps it's a, a you know, um, state-owned piece of property and we inadvertently send them a bill. That's a, the state property is exempt by law. Um, that an incorrect determination of impervious area has been made. So that's the one where if we get the initial call and we, we look at it and they're correct, we'll, we'll, we'll address it. We won't force them into this unless we just can't come to an agreement. Um, uh, stormwater charges for the same property charged to multiple accounts. So we may have a situation where we've got more than one water meter <coughs> and we're trying to allocate that that whole property to those different water meters. And we may have a mistake on that where we allocate 150% instead of 100%, and that would be a legitimate uh, uh, reason for appeal. And then the property falls outside the city's jurisdictional area. So this is a unique situation. Some of our mapping actually makes it appear that there is some property that's either inside the city of Louisville that's really not, and then some property that's that's uh, outside uh, on our map that may actually be in the city. So if we've got a, a jurisdictional uh, uh, disagreement, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll resolve that through the appeals process too. Council, one thing I might add is 
I will tell you, I think this is one of the most difficult databases we have ever had to correct or create and incorrect. Uh, Jordan or Keith, you know, I can talk with you a little bit. So if you if you have a shopping area, we really had to go out and look at some of those properties, each one of them, decide how we were going to allocate that parking lot to each one of those businesses if they had separate water meters. So there's a lot of complexity in this database. Uh, and so that's why we do expect a lot of phone calls because there wasn't just a consistent way uh, to treat each property because of configuration. I don't know, Jordan, if you want to add any details to that. But. No, I, I just want to thank Chris and his team, IT, they, they really helped us with all of that. Yeah, it, the mapping, the, the different tools that we're going to show you later, and just the, I mean, it's really been a collaborative effort between public services, ITS, and, and utility billing, um, uh, really trying to get through this. It, it has been a lengthy process. About uh, four years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so getting back to the appeals process, uh, you get a bill and you want to appeal it, you've got 30 days from the date that you received that bill to appeal to the city. Um, anything that comes to us in writing as a written appeal, we will respond within 30 days um, with, a, with an answer, a written response. Um, if, if, the, if we can't come to an agreement, if the property owner still objects to the, to the written response, he then has uh, a, a, a further appeal to the city manager's office, where the city manager then has uh, 30 days to give a, 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 another written response. In, in theory, the city manager's uh, answer is final. Uh, however, we all know that there is a court system and, and somebody that objects vehemently enough may, may pursue uh, additional uh, appeals to the courts. But that is the end of our uh, appeals process. And it does put the burden on that owner to document. So an area of, of, of discrepancy between impervious area. If I pull it up on my GIS map, and show them what I've calculated based off of. If they still disagree and they have to go survey their property, that the cost of that is on them. They have to uh, bear the burden of proving that uh, and, and providing that evidence to us. Staff recommendations. We do have the, this ordinance on the agenda for tonight. We do uh, recommend that you, you pass that ordinance. Um, we have giving you a brief snapshot of the, of the credit program that we've developed. We've also put a draft of the um, administrative directive in your packet to, to review. Should you have any feedback on any of that stuff, we would be happy to take that and, and, and integrate that in as, as City Manager uh, uh, Aaron uh, approves that and we move forward to implement. We can stop here and, and take questions and comments, or we can continue on. We do have a piece about our community outreach. So. Are there any questions? I have a I have Go ahead, Bob. I had a question. I was trying to formulate uh, on the appeals process. It says 30 days. The appeal has to be filed 30 days from the bill. Is that the first time it's billed, or does that mean if it's billed this month, next month it's billed, and finally they look at it and say, hey, that's not right, so... So the, the appeal, the, the, the language is that it has to be appealed within 30 days of the, of the billing being disputed. So if it's the same bill, I, I guess in theory they can, they've got 30 days every time they receive the bill. But you know, if I understand the intent, it's we're not going to go back and correct all of the previous bills. We would correct from that last 30-day bill and then anything moving forward. So. so having disputed that bill, if they're successful, that means going forward? all the future bills will be corrected or do you have to dispute each 30 days? No, if, if they document a new impervious area and we were wrong in what we had assessed them, we will fix that in the system so that going forward they're billed for the appropriate. Okay. Here's my frustration with this ordinance and I was, I talked about this at the beginning and then uh, could get no traction but it still bothers me. Um, it, and you just got through saying a minute ago there's not a consistency to the way we can treat each property. We've allowed all the commercial properties, no matter what size, to have an appeal process. We've allowed a select group of residential properties in the Denton County um, or it's called, um, to have an appeal process. We've given no appeal process to anybody else. 
And I, th I think going back to that statement, there's not a consistent way to, to treat each property. Um, it it <coughs> frustrates me that we've allowed no <coughs> appeal process unless you're commercial or within that district. It, 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 we haven't allowed an appeals process for that district. We've allowed a credit program. Well, credit. Okay. okay. So let me revise that. Okay. We've made a provision. We've made a provision for those residential people as a de facto. Okay. Okay. And we've allowed every commercial property, no matter what size, to have an appeal process. And we've denied an appeal process to <coughs> all of the residential properties. A, a credit. A credit program for the residential. Is that they can still yeah. appeal. They just well no they don't get credits. No. They don't get credit. It's not going to do them any good. I mean, it's a yeah, flat fee. They, they can't get anything for that. Why bother to appeal if you can't get anything? Because you feel like you've been wrongly audited. Well, what good is that going to do you? So why you get your, you get to say I'm wrongly audited, um, and thanks for sending me the next bill for the same amount. No, they correct the bills. That, that's my understanding. Not, not if I'm on a resident, not if I'm on a residential property. They, I cannot get that appeal. Process. Everybody pays four bucks per right. bill, right? Right. Um, and that's the difference. And yeah, we've said, are you just, and I agree with you, uh, there's not a consistent way to treat each property. So the remedy for that to me would always have been to allow that appeal process to be across the board for all properties and then see what happens. Uh, I'm, I'm, I guess, confused on are, are we talking about credits or appeals? Because it's two different. Well, fixing, uh, the, fixing the bill that's wrong. Fixing the wrong bill. Uh, because you have, you, you believe you have a case um, for uh, your particular property. Uh, uh. There's really no, so a resident has a flat $4 fee regardless of their improvements area. Mm -hmm. It's standardized. What would they appeal? What would their appeal be based on? The very, the very same things that a commercial property <coughs> can base theirs but, on. But they're not, the bill's not based on the impervious area. That's standardized for residential at a $4 flat fee. Which is the problem because there's not a consistent way to treat every property, but that's exactly what we've done. When I say consistent, what I really meant was, so you may have some shopping centers where each one of the business owners have their own water meter. You may have some business owners where they don't. That's really what I meant by consistent. The consistency in the program is established under state law, and that's where you have to have a flat fee based on ERU. And that is actually calculated for commercial. That's that dollar forty-three conversion, and that's based on what is the ERU two thousand twenty eight hundred. Yeah, yeah, and so that's, the, that's the basis. So the state law establishes the fat, flat fee, but does the state law establish that there can never be any appeal or adjustment? Well, I've got a question. And, and I'm trying that's to what we created. But, but, but it's a four dollar flat fee. How would you adjust it if it's not based on an impervious area? I mean, how, what, on what basis would you do that? Now, we've talked about a credit for residential, but let's talk about that. So you're let's talk spend, about a credit for residential. Yeah, so you're going to spend a tremendous amount of step, time to establish, let's say they want to have a, a rain uh, collection system, okay? Okay. So how do, you, how do you, number one, continue to monitor that? So a person gets, what, a, a dollar credit? Let's I mean, say. it's so minimal compared to the staff time it would take to administer that. It, it, it's not logical. Now, we've looked at a lot of cities' policies, and I don't think we found any that did that. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Not at that level. And, and so <laughs> taking that a step further, the detention <coughs> pond, you know, we look at what is the impervious area of this total lot? How much of it goes to the detention pond? So you're getting a credit based only on that piece of the impervious area that goes to the detention pond bunch of engineering calculations that go into that. The house, if you've got one rain barrel on one gutter, which part of the roof is going to that and how much do we calculate? What's the what's the actual impervious area that's being reduced in that gutter? You talk about a dollar, it may be 23 cents of, of credit for that. And if you start looking at the thousands of, of single family residential houses that we would have to, to get into doing those calculations on, and it gets huge. I get that. At the same time, what we've done is set, in fact, we've expressly set no incentive for single family residences to do anything. None. In, a, in an environment where we have a, um, you know, a Vision 2025 plan that says 
we're working towards uh, being environmentally conscious, we've said if you're on a residential property, there is no option for any incentive. And let's be honest, not everybody, I mean, you put the burden on the back of the property owner to present their case. So you're, you know, how many people are even going to do that? But I think taking it away is a bad statement. And I'll leave it at that. I mean, we're not going to end up changing this for me tonight. I get that. I just, I, you, you've heard me and you'll hear me again at the dais. The, the, the appeal program, the appeals does not say non-single family. Appeals is appeals. That, that applies to everybody. The credit program, you're right. You're making a valid statement that we're not incentivizing the, the residential homeowner to reduce the the water flow or improve the water quality. So what's the benefit of, why would a, a single family owner go through the trouble of putting together their appeal package because they have to assemble their case for no purpose, well, again, for no gain? It would have to be one of these four items. If the state has purchased that, that single family property, we got to stop billing it. It's now exempt property. Um, you know, the incorrect determination of impervious area, that, it, you know, if somebody says, I only have 2,500 square feet and I want to pay less than $4 a month, I, I think we made the decision when we approved the other ordinances that that's not. I think you're missing my point. Uh, I, I, I think they are. They are getting it, Neil, but I do understand what he's saying. But uh, if you've got a half acre lot and you've got a 10,000 or a 1,000 square foot structure and the next one is a thousand square feet, but it's got a two-story. So the impervious area is you you got le you got more area that could absorb water in that. Do we make a distinction in those? And the answer is no, I'm assuming, correct? That's correct. Really no, just assuming because we did that. Or do we at least allow people, so to speak, their day in court to say, here's why I think I'm uh, my rate should be adjusted. It's, you're not going to get 23,000 people coming in to adjust the rent. Did you say that they can do, have an appeal? They can appeal, but it's but not going to do it's not good. Good. change their ERU, their $4 ERU for that single family flat residential rate for is a flat rate. That's correct. So they could appeal them. But they have to base it on one of those. Yeah, I know, but they could appeal. <laughs> they, they could go through the appeals process. My written response would be... Is there a cost to appeal? We don't have a, an appeal cost. Yeah. If we ask them to prepare documents, that would be on them to prepare whatever cost that is. So the appeal and you decide they're correct, what, what do they get in return? Well, right now, if it's a single family residential that has a rain barrel, they're going to get a response that says the, the city's fee is $4 per ERU. Your home is one ERU. So in other words, no incentive for having uh, made that effort. Is my point. That's under the current ordinance, yes. Okay. And that's been, that's been my issue from the day one. So, and, and like I said, this will, I'm sure this will pass tonight. That's my guess. Um, but at least, you know, one last opportunity to be heard. Sure. Um, I don't agree with what we did in its entirety. I don't. I hear you, council member, but sometimes you have to look at the cost of administration. I to administer it differently. I mean, let, let's go down that rain barrel road again. It's like, how do you... How do you calculate the impact, and how do you monitor that they still have that room there over time? Let me ask you, if you go to Zoning Board of Adjustments, do we have only certain people that can go to Zoning Board and actually get anything, or can anybody take their case to Zoning Board of Adjustments? If they have a case that qualifies for review by that board. Okay. And can they then potentially, not always, get some kind of resolution that may be beneficial to them financially. Perhaps. We don't do that for this. Because it's $4 a month. I get it. <laughs> Sorry, but it's that, there's not a city that administers, as far as I know, that administers it, it, it in the way that you're suggesting. I would suggest if you want to encourage residential uh, to have some type of stormwater incentive program, you create something else that might do that. Well, this could have been the something else is my point. At least let them not just be heard, but be told, uh, thank you, you've got a great case and we're not doing a thing about it and I hope you keep using a rain barrel. Because I don't think that's a good answer. Because it, it there's no incentive. There's no incentive. 
I think we I, want to. I will say, and, Neil, that there has not. This hadn't been anything new to anybody. This is the way it was set up from the beginning. Because it'd be four dollars a month. This was also my argument in the beginning. I, it I, I'm saying it has been all there all along. Isn't that right? It, you knew this from the beginning when we started this. No, in the beginning when we were working on the GIS to try and figure out the properties, we did not know that, and we were trying to calculate what okay, the permeable when we got and past that step. Was. A year so or two ago. In the ago, beginning, we actually were looking so at. So a year possible. or two ago, did we know this? Did we know this? Yes, and I had voiced my opinion. Okay. So, so I'm just telling you again, this is still my opinion. That's fine, then. Let's so did move you, on. I, I mean, so did you want a system where you pay $4 because you've got a larger house and I pay $3 because I have no. a smaller house? No, I want the appeal and credit process open to anybody who is willing to make the effort and has a legitimate case, not carved out exclusively for commercial and then a special deal for people. And I'm not, I'm not against the deal we've made on the water, uh, the, the drainage district. I get it. But to say commercial, you have this process uh, in credit option, residential, you don't. Uh, I have an issue with that. And especially in an environment and with a 2025 plan that says we're out trying to encourage being environmentally, um, to, you know, responsible. Okay, we, if, we had, if we, we had the, uh, if I'll we just, had, hold on this second. If we had, if we went to a deal where we did everybody, what, what is the average commercial bill going to be? Well, there's 800. We're going to send out 800 letters um, uh, this week for everybody over $50 a month on their commercial bill. Okay, what's the average bill? I don't even know what the average is. Is it 51? No. Or is it 5,000? No. Um, <clears throat> what's, what's the highest bill? 3,000 a month. And the lowest? Zero, you know, one cent a month is what we got down to on some of those. So we have commercial properties that are paying less than residential, but still have this option. Mm -hmm. Yes. Realistically, are they going to, they can exercise the credit option? Probably yes. Not. But, and that's part of the rub. You know, and, and, and realistically, you know, we're saying that we're going to have a big workload for it to, to handle the residential, but, you know, again, that's, that's a, an estimate based on, on you know, what we think we would get if we opened the credit policy to, to, to single-family residential. Uh, Perhaps, but uh, even looking at Zoning Board of Adjustments, which meets infrequently because we have few people that challenge, um, there's a lot of people out there that maybe have a case but do nothing with it. A lot of people that don't have a case, so they're not going to do a same situation here, I would argue. A lot of people that never have a case, some people that might think they have a case but aren't going to go down for one rain, rain barrel to argue about it. And some people who think they have a legitimate case and would like to be heard knowing that being heard actually could produce some result. I just don't understand carving them out of the picture. You do realize if they won their entire case and they didn't have any water going away from their property, the, the savings would be $4. Yes. It's, okay. That's almost $50 a year. Forty-eight. Ten years, it's five hundred dollars. We're at four hundred and eighty dollars. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. So they have to deal it every month. No. 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 no, 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 no. Our, our credit program is set up where we have an annual renewal process where you self-report. You know, you you submit on the parking lot sweeping, for example. You send us tickets showing how often you swept, that sort of thing. So it'll be an annually renewable. We do have a, a program in place where if we show up and, and inspect and you, you're, you're not doing what you said you were doing, then we cut you off from the credit program. Uh, so, you know, uh, obviously if we, if we applied the same thing to the residential, it would be done in the same general fashion. But the cost would be higher, correct? The cost. If you had the same process that we have in the commercial, the cost would be higher because the administration of it's higher. Because if you, if you handle all residential, like you're handling commercial. Yeah. It kind of depends on how many appeals you have. Yeah. So. yeah. How many with what? How many, how many appeals, appeals you, you have. have. No, no. If you, if you had to do more to it, it's going to cost you more money than saying $4. You're saying we oh, might have yeah. to charge $5 yeah. for, to cover the cost of the right. program. 
Yeah, yeah, it's going to cost you more than four dollars to do. Yes, don't I have that problem on the commercial side too? Potentially, you know, we're not sure at this point um, how many people will avail themselves of the credit program. It could be few, it could be a lot. I get a three thousand dollar bill for the first time. Okay. You might appeal. To okay. I'm just saying, I would rather have seen an equal treatment. There are some things that obviously could not be done on a residential property. <coughs> The structural controls, the detention pond, that sort of thing. But I mean, you know, we can visit and look and see if there's a reason to to try to implement another tier of, of credit. Um, you know, if it's the wisdom of the council that we, we do that. So what if, for example, I have a 600 foot detention pond, 600 square foot? Well, it all depends on on the retention rate. How much water was leaving your site before the pond? How much impervious area, how much goes into the pond, how much goes out of the pond, how quickly it goes out of the pond. It's all going to be, uh, you know, it says up to 20% uh, credit on that. Okay. And, and that's all going to require engineering just documentation. Throwing you a lot of yeah. So we can move on. I'm just um, making the night away started on this. Okay. Okay, let's move forward. Um, we've got just a little bit about. Um, mm -hmm the outreach and Jordan's going to step back up and talk about that. So since October 2nd when we established the stormwater drainage utility and the, the rate structure, um, we've been looking at different ways that we can let people know about the fee. Um, so a couple of uh, things that we have set to do is we're going to send those letters to all the non-single family residential accounts that will receive a bill of greater than $50 per month. That's about 800 letters that we'll be sending out in the next couple weeks. Um, also, we'll be including information on our utility bills starting with the December cycles. So one month before, everyone will have a special message on their utility bill letting, informing them that the next month they will see a stormwater on their uh, bill. Uh, we have a website, um, and our information from our website and our frequently asked questions will be a part of the letters that go out. Um, our website will also include tools for some of these non-single family residential so that they can look up their bill. They'll be able to look up their bill by account number, by address, and by name. Um, and then also we'll have a map where they can kind of look at their impervious area, see what is considered impervious, uh, and also see the breakdown of, of that impervious area. And I'll, I'll be able to show you that um, at the end of this. Um, the, we've also uh, getting involved in the development review process. Part of these uh, credits, if you remember those permit structural controls, the best time to get those implemented is during the design phase so that they can be built into the property. And also informing people that if they build a, a large impervious area, they will be charged for that. So letting people know up front, new development, what those charges are going to be. Uh, we'll also be per, uh, participating in community outreach, including Marty events, and providing information to homeowners on the purpose of the stormwater drainage utility fee, and then also letting them know the progress as we start moving into getting some of these capital projects done. Um, so, for example, our, the bill is an example of what a bill is going to look like. Under the current charges in January of 2018, they'll start seeing this stormwater <coughs> charge that shows up right here. This is a residential bill, so you see that flat rate of $4 there. Uh, this area here is where we'll utilize that special message that will be sent out with the <coughs> bill, and it will uh, basically say uh, next month stormwater charges will begin appearing on your bill. Please visit our website or call basically our number at, over at Public Services for more information. Um, so the website that we have will be able to have a section on frequently asked questions talking about the purpose of the stormwater utility, um, talking about our projects that we have slated to begin. Uh, and then also these tools that are really geared toward our non-single family residential since they don't have that flat rate. Um, so we've got the stormwater fee by business name. I think he's going to pull some of that up for me. That one's on the link, actually. The, the, you don't want to go to the link? Yeah. Chris put it on the link. This one? No, the other one. Um, so this is kind of like what a reporting would look like. Um, so they'll be able to search by their either account number, their uh, account holder name, um, or by their address. Um, so basically it kind of gives out, and this is just our account right here. Um, right now we have a lot of property that belongs to the city of Lewis, a lot of impervious area, but they would, you see the breakdown of the parcels that are uh, associated with the account, as well as the impervious area and the, the annual fee. 
Is the city of Louisville exempt on this? We are, we are not. not. Yes? No, sir. We're no. not. Okay. Just check. We made a decision to not exempt ourselves. I don't know about ourselves. the credit. Um, the second tool we have uh, is our, um, this is a prime example of what that table will look like. So that table is kind of the back side of it. Um, our customers will be able to go and either search by their account name, utility, um, account holder name, or their address. And basically kind of what it will pull up is again, they'll be able to kind of see a map outlined of what parcels they're being billed for to that account. And then also see the impervious area as it matches up down here, the total. Um, and then it will have a section for the monthly fee and the annual fee. So we're still in the process of developing those tools, um, but they should be ready by the end of the week. And then finally, we'll also have the stormwater uh, map. Um, and as you go around this map, you can click on uh, the different parcels of that property. Uh, it'll show the parcel ID, the address, the monthly fee, annual fee, and then the total impervious area. So the MCL grand that front part uh, is 71,658 square feet with a monthly fee of $103. Is this the link we had in our deal because I tried to click on it and it wouldn't? Uh, we had some uh, issues with the link that okay. was there. Um, but I also think you have to be on the city's yeah. internal network right now because these links are not live yet. Okay. So right. we'll, we'll push them out on the website later this week. Mm -hmm. Just waiting for the approval of everything tonight. With that, we'd be happy to answer any other questions. Okay. Any questions? Anything else, Neil? No. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Manager, we ready to move on to the agenda? Yes, sir. We're going to start with the invocation by Councilman Ferguson, followed by the pledge to the flags. Uh, Councilman Gilmore. Next item, public hearing, item one. Item two, public hearing. This item, we are requesting it be continued to the November 20th <coughs> council meeting. Anybody have anything on that? Nothing. Sure. Item three, public hearing. Uh, item four, public hearing. Item five, public hearing. Item six, public hearing. Now we're down to consent agenda. Seven, item eight, item nine, item ten. Now we're down to regular hearings, item eleven. <coughs> I think this is an interesting project. Uh, the home is being built by a local nonprofit, Green Extreme Homes. <coughs> Uh, it would be a showcase for sustainable development, and they would make it available to a local veteran uh, as a, a level of affordable housing. Is this going to open up? <coughs> I've, I've had some complaints about the quality of the home finish out that Habitat did down here. Is this going to open that, that back up? So, I think the best way for me to answer that is if we bring the small area to you, uh, this area is more of a target area, and this is why staff is in support of this variance, uh, so that it actually is more of a continuation of, of Old Town and that overlay district. It's very likely that staff may be recommending to you that we at least extend some sections or parts of the Old Town Overlay District. Uh, so you have this consistent look between Old Town and Old Town North. 
So would we support this in other areas of town? It is likely we would not. If I do that, what you're suggesting, does that also imply that the Old Town Design Review Committee is now going to be expanding its footprint as well? Uh, likely, but that would be a council decision. We'll bring you options on that. <coughs> Richard, do you have anything to add? I guess one thing I would add that most of the homes surrounding this site um, currently do have siding. Uh, the era that they were built in, uh, the siding was the common exterior uh, material of those homes. Yeah, the more craftsman style homes, so it's more consistent. That's really, if we studied that small area, that's really what we found. Uh, to my mind, if we, we have a patchwork. You start moving anywhere in this area and you start getting more and more of a patchwork. It's just because everything was built in a time when it really didn't matter. So um, whatever we do, let's steer it towards a more consistent neighborhood Absolutely. feel if we can. Uh, I think that's I think it needs to fall under like the small area plans. Um, and it, then we don't get into this patchwork of one offs. And that's what we'll be bringing to you at retreat. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Item 12. Okay. Uh, TJ, on number two. Yes, sir. Do you have to abstain on that one? I do. Okay. Whether I have to or not, I will. Okay. Put it that way. Mayor, if we can go back to number six, I'd like to take you into a closed session for consultation with the chairman. What else do we need now? She wants to go to uh, executive session now. Right now? Okay. We're going to go into closed session. Don't need to be in here. Leave the room, please. Thank you. All right, there you go. It's 7 o'clock. Call tonight's Louisville City Council meeting to order. We do have a quorum present. Okay, City Secretary. Oh, excuse me. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, invocation given by Councilman Ferguson, pledged to the uh, Texas and American flags by Councilman Gilmore. Take a moment for um, silent prayer and meditation. Uh, keep maybe in mind the folks in Sutherland Springs, but also everyone who's a victim of violence tonight. Thank you. Please join me in the pledges to our flags. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Public hearing number one, consideration. consideration of an ordinance granting a special use permit for an auto display, sales, outdoor, and repair facility on 4.14 acres located on the south side of State Highway 121 business, approximately 570 <coughs> feet east of East Valley Ridge Boulevard. This is a two-building development with one building housing an indoor used car dealership that will offer minor repairs and containing five spaces for occasional vehicle display during normal business hours. PNZ recommended approval by a vote of six to zero. 
The recommendation is that the City Council approve the ordinance as set forth in the caption above. We have both Planning Director Richard Ludke, Greg Kaiser from Aztec Commercial, and Naveen, which I believe was their engineer, available to address any questions. Thank you. No other cards or anything? Okay. Do we have a motion to close the public hearing? Move to close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Uh, Councilman Ferguson. Move to approve the SUP as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. Councilman. This is an ordinance of Louisville City Council amending the zoning ordinance by granting a spe special use permit for an auto display, sales outdoor, and repair facility on approximately 4.14 acres legally described as Lot 2, Block A, Thompson Edition, located on the south side of the State Highway 121 business, approximately 570 feet east of East Valley Ridge Boulevard and zoned Light Industrial District, providing for a repealer, severability, and a penalty, and declaring an emergency. Okay, is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Public hearing number two. Consideration of an ordinance granting a zone change from heavy industrial district on specific use landfill accessory use district on 15 acres located at 1600 South Railroad Street. The recommendation is that the public hearing be continued to November, November 20th, 2017 City Council meeting. Okay. Uh, Bob, do you have anything? No. I move we continue to uh, Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to continue. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Public hearing number three, consideration of an ordinance granting a zone change from single family residential to Old Town Mixed Use 1 on 0.231 acres located at 230 Samuel Street. This zone change will bring this property into compliance with the Old Town Master Plan. PNZ recommended approval by a vote of 7 to 0. The recommendation is that the City Council approve the ordinance as set forth in the caption. We have Planning Director Richard Ludke available to address any questions, and I have no other cards. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have a motion to close the public hearing? Close the public, public hearing. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the public <coughs> hearing. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Does anyone have a motion on this? Move, Move to, to approve the uh, ordinance. Okay. Second. We have a motion to approve and a second. Councilor? This is an ordinance of the Louisville City Council amending the zoning ordinance by rezoning a two, th uh, 0.231 acre tract of land legally described as portions of Lot 3 and Lot 11, Block A, L.M. Keeley Edition, located on the south side of Samuel Street, approximately 132 feet west of South Charles Street at 230 Samuel Street, from single-family residential district zoning to Old Town Mixed Use 1 district zoning, Correcting the official zoning map, preserving all other portions of the zoning ordinance, determining that the public interest and general welfare demand the zoning change and amendment therein made, providing for a repealer, severability, and a penalty, and declaring an emergency. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries unanimously. Public hearing number four. Consideration of an ordinance granting a zone change from General Business District to Old Town Center Business District on 0 .076 acres located at 170 West Main Street. This zone change will bring this property into compliance with the Old Town Master Plan. PNZ recommended approval by a vote of 7 to 0. The recommendation is that the City Council approve the ordinance as set forth in the caption. We have Planning Director Richard Lutke and Bill Peck available to address any questions. Okay. Uh, do we have a motion make a to motion close to the Make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. <coughs> motion carries. Make a motion to approve. Second. second. We have a motion to approve and a second. Councilor? 
This is an ordinance of the Louisville City Council amending the zoning ordinance by rezoning a .076 acre tract of land out of the J.W. King Survey Abstract Number 696, located on the south side of West Main Street, approximately 150 feet west of South Poydras Street at 170 West Main Street, from General Business District Zoning to Old Town Center Business District Zoning, correcting the official zoning map, preserving all other portions of the zoning ordinance, determining that the public interest and general welfare demand the zoning change and amendment therein made, providing for repeal or severability and a penalty and declaring an emergency. Okay, is there any discussion? <coughs> okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion carries unanimously. Agenda I, public hearing number five. Consideration of an ordinance granting a zone change from General Business District to Old Town Center Business District on .089 acres located at 128 West Main Street. This zone change will bring this property into compliance with the Old Town Master Plan. PNZ recommended approval by a vote of 7-0. to zero. The recommendation is that the City Council approve the ordinance as set forth in the caption. We have Planning Director Richard Ludke and Bill Peck both available to address any questions. Okay. Make a motion to close public hearing. Second. We have a motion to second to close public hearing. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve and a second. Uh, Councilor. This is an ordinance of the Louisville City Council amending the zoning ordinance by rezoning a .089 acre tract of land out of the J.W. King Survey abstract number 696 located on the south side of West Main Street, approximately 145 feet west of South Mill Street at 128 West Main Street, from General Business District Zoning to Old Town Center Business District Zoning, correcting the official zoning map preserving all other portions of the zoning ordinance, determining that the public interest and general welfare demand the zoning change and amendment therein made, providing for repeal or severability and a penalty <clears throat> and declaring an emergency. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Public hearing number six. Consideration of an ordinance granting a special use permit for communication tower on .911 acres located on the southwest corner of Fox Avenue and the I-35E frontage road. The 1,236 square foot telecommun telecommunication facility will house a 100 foot tower that will help alleviate a gap in T-Mobile signal strength and allow other carriers to expand their service. PNZ recommended approval by a vote of six to zero. The recommendation is that the city council approve the ordinance as set forth in the caption. We have planning director Richard Ludke available to address any question, questions and John Gatz would like to speak before the council. Come in, come up. And if you would give us your name and address for the record, please. My name is John Getz. I reside at 309 Bamboro Drive in Anna, Texas, 75409. Uh, and uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, thank you very much for entertaining our request this evening. Uh, we've worked really hard uh, with the zoning people, uh, with the DRC, in order to not only make an effective uh, compound and cell tower site that will service the community as well as I-35, and not only support T-Mobile's endeavors, but make it available to all other uh, cellular companies, uh, AT&T, Sprint, and to assure you that it's going to be heavily marketed within the cellular community in order to go ahead and get that uh, site up and operational. Uh, I have myself and also T-Mobile's RF engineer, Dushant Shaw, uh, <coughs> to answer any questions should you have any. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Are there any questions? Mayor, we may, Mr. Shaw, did you want to speak also? Yes, uh, name and address for the record, please. Sure, Dishan Shah, work for T-Mobile. I'm the RF engineer, 7998 Warren Parkway, Frisco, Texas. Um, I can talk about it or I can answer any questions. Okay, let me see it's if they have any questions coming. for you right now. Sure. Are there any questions at this time? Nothing right now, so thank you. Move, <coughs> move to close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion to second to close the public hearing. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Uh, do we have a motion for the? I make a motion to approve. Okay. 
Second. We have a motion to approve and a second. Councilor? This is an ordinance of the Louisville City Council amending the zoning ordinance by granting a special use permit for a communication tower on approximately 0.911 acres, legally described as Lot 1R Block A Fox I-35 E edition, located on the southwest corner of Fox Avenue and the I-35 E frontage road, and zone general business district, providing for repealer severability and a penalty and declaring an emergency. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, gentlemen. Visitor Citizen Forum. At this time, any person with business before the council not scheduled on the agenda may speak to council. No <clears throat> formal action can be taken on these items at this meeting. <clears throat> Mayor, I have no cards. Okay. Consent, ag consent agenda. All of the following items on the consent agenda are considered to be self-explanatory by the council and will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member or citizen so requests. <coughs> For a citizen to request removal of an item, a speaker card must be filled out and submitted to the city secretary. Mayor, I've received no cards on consent. Okay. We have a motion? Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion to second to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Okay. Thank you. Agenda item 11. Consideration of a request for a variance to section 6-181B regarding the exterior finish requirements for a home located at 411 Mullen Street. The property owner is proposing that the home be 100% siding matching with the neighboring homes. The property is located on the north side of West College Street just outside of the Old Town Design District that would allow 100% siding. The recommendation is that the City Council approve the variance as set forth in the caption. We have Wayne Snell, Director of Neighborhood and Inspection Services, available to address any questions, and also Bill Puck. Okay. Anybody have any comments or questions? Okay, we don't have anybody at this time for the questions. Okay. We have a motion. I make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve and a second. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Agenda item 12. Consideration of an ordinance providing for the rules for the use, operation, and financing of the city's stormwater drainage utility. This item establishes the rules by which the city will operate the stormwater utility. The recommendation is that the city council approve the ordinance as set forth in the caption. Okay. Neil. Yes, sir. Do you have some comments on this? I do. Um, I uh, am going to be voting against this. Um, I'm not entirely opposed to the ordinance in, in whole, but I am in part. Um, for the most part, I agree with the ordinance. The part that I do not agree with is that we have uh, created the opportunity for commercial entities to obtain uh, stormwater credits for various actions they might take towards conservation. Um, our big move number nine in the 2025 plan says that we will encourage conservation of land, water, energy, clean air, et cetera, um, but we've provided nothing for uh, residential properties to um, enjoy any kind of credit or incentive towards um, conserving water, conserving uh, uh, or, or uh, managing runoff in a positive way. So uh, I th I'm, not, um, I'm not opposed to pursuing some other avenue to make that happen in the future. Um, and I would encourage us to uh, look into that possibility. I hope we do. Uh, because it is missing out of this version of the ordinance, I will be voting against it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Yeah, I've got one comment, or a few comments also, Mayor. Um, you know, one of the things when we looked at this ordinance, too, we also looked at it to try to balance this and make a fair, um, I guess, a fair program for the citizens of our city. And really what's happened is, is the the brunt of this is going to the businesses. So even the smallest business is probably going to be paying in one month what your average citizen will be paying in a year. 
and most of it will be paying you much more than that. So having an appeals process for that, I think, makes sense. Uh, I don't think the administration for having an appeals process and doing a variance for every city property for citizens makes sense. And then on top of that, um, oh, that's it. So, but I, I think it's really fair. I think the way the city has structured this where, you know, the businesses are actually bearing the brunt of the uh, fees on this. I think it makes sense the way the appeal process and way the um, credits are given. Okay. And with that, I'll make a motion to approve unless somebody else has comments. Somebody else have comments? I just have a couple of additional comments uh, per the information that um, Keith Marvin gave us in a workshop. We have commercially pro commercial properties paying as low as zero. So um, I don't have any data, and I'm not going to delve too deep into this right now, uh, but I don't have any data that supports an argument that uh, commercial is paying the bulk of the stormwater fee um, there and certainly there is not data to support the notion that uh, commercial properties it, that every commercial property is paying more than a residential property that's simply not a true statement so uh, I still maintain that if we are sincere about uh, the 2025 plan and sustainability um, that we should have considered as some kind of incentive for uh, individual residential properties. Um, I don't think, as I said in in the um, council workshop, that you're going to see uh, 23,000 people come in and request some kind of uh, a credit. Uh, they have the obligation to first prepare a good case to present. And uh, if they're aware that, for example, a single rain barrel, barrel is worth maybe um, 12 cents off of their bill, they're probably not even going to bother with it. So uh, the target here is for those who have a more substantial um, um, involvement or effort or something on the ground that actually contributes significantly to uh, stormwater control. Um, I think it's. I think. I think we can still strike very much a balance. Okay. Thank you. Thank both of y'all for your comments. Do we have a motion? I make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve and <clears throat> second. Any further discussion, Councilor? This is an ordinance of the Louisville City Council providing for rules for the use, operation, and financing of the city's stormwater drainage utility, <coughs> providing for repealer severability and an effective date and declaring an emergency. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Nay. Okay. Do you have that, Julie? Okay. Thank you. Now we're down to reports. You're here tonight. <coughs> Just come on down. <laughs> Nothing. 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 Okay. Two things, Mayor. The uh, lake level is about a foot and a half below the conservation pool, and then you'll notice we do have our Christmas lights on outside across the street, and the new inception lighting on this building and the MCL Grand, and that's just a practice run in preparation for our tree lighting ceremony coming up <coughs> on the 18th. Okay. Thank you, Gina. Smart. Claire? No, Mayor. Eric? Yes, Mayor and Council, you may have noticed on I-35 on the frontage roads, both north and southbound at Business 121, the flyover bridges have been closed by TxDOT. Uh, there's been some wear and tear. They've found a condition that's not uh, safe for, for it to be uh, open. So basically the problem is uh, the bearing pads between the, the beams and the bent, the top of the bents or the top of the columns have worn. So they were going to replace those. That's going to happen in mid-December-ish. Um, so I'm looking around the first of the year. They can jack that up, put those in there, and get that back open probably around the first of the year. I'll keep you posted if I know anything different. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Mayor. Uh, this Saturday, November 11th, uh, from 8 o'clock to 1130, uh, is the second largest, and actually it ends up being as large almost as our largest event for Keep Louisville Beautiful. It's the uh, Trinity Trash Bash. Uh, they'll be cleaning up a lot of the uh, tributaries, a lot of the waterfront property and everything there. So uh, feel free to sign up in advance, or if you want to just show up, you'll be given areas to clean up. Uh, like I said, it's one of the largest of the year. If you get there, there'll be coffee and goodie bags for everybody. There will be T-shirts. Uh, and then afterwards, at the end, they give prizes for the teams that pick up the most. 
the most unusual prize, and then there's just a ton of door prizes that are given by a lot of our local businesses uh, that support the project. So I always say this, it's the most fun you'll have picking up trash uh, this Saturday at Lake Park, 8 o'clock. Thank you. TJ? Mayor, I uh, want to let um, our artist community and those who maybe are, are considering being artists, uh, we have a holiday art sale exhibit. This is the first time I think I've seen this. Um, submissions are uh, due by November 15th, but it's called The Gift of Art. And if you hop on the uh, city website, you can get all that information, but it's actually an exhibit and art sale. So it'll be uh, going through December 2nd through the 30th, but you need to get your submissions in by November 15th. Just um, go to the city website and look under Latest City News for Gift of Art. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. okay. Neil. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, MCL Grand uh, Activities, live performances. November 10th through 12th, there'll be five shows of Seussical the Musical by the Christian Youth Theater. Um, on November 17th, uh, the Louisville Lake Symphony will pre be presenting a program entitled Symphonic Showcase. There's an evening of dance on November 18th presented by Frisco Youth Dance Ensemble. <coughs> and then on November 19th at the MCL Grand, we have the Traveling Red River Songwriters presentation and these are a group of extremely talented and well-known folks that if you enjoy anything similar to this type of music, it'll be a great show. Um, on the 25th, the Majestic Ballet is uh, presenting two shows of the Nutcracker. And of course, acoustic jams continue every Friday presented by the Visual Arts League. Uh, public events, we have the Greater Louisville Arts Alliance Angel Awards being presented on November 12th at the MCL Grand, uh, a class called Garden Secrets Rain Gardens, presented by Keep Louisville Beautiful on November 16th, a LuLaRoe shopping event on November 19th, and yoga in the plaza on Wednesdays throughout November. Uh, art exhibits, we have Draw the Message, Paint the Heart, which opens on November 3rd, so it's already open, <laughs> and Cross Timbers Artist Guild exhibit, that's open through November 27th. And I think that covers all of the MCL Grand. Um, additionally, uh, while I will also be at the Trinity Trash Bash for KLB, uh, one of our citizens is uh, kind of uh, created an event of their own at Central Park, inviting people to come share a potluck on that Saturday morning. So if you're not out cleaning up the waterways and uh, want to do something else, um, that's a second option for you. And I think the hours on that are 9 to 11.30. 10. 10. Okay, 10 to, 10 to 11.30? Something like that. Yeah, it starts I think at 10. It, okay. Okay. Bob? Uh, nothing further. Okay. Counselor? Secretary? Just a reminder that tomorrow is the um, election day. The polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And where is the polling place? It just depends on where your precinct votes at. Um, the information is available online, or anyone can contact our office, and we'll be happy to help them okay. find their thank location. Thank you. Officer, thank you for your service to the community. So, and we are going in closed session now. OK. With that, we're going into closed session in accordance with Texas Government Code, subchapter D. Number one, section 551.072, real estate, property acquisition. And item two, section 551.087, economic development, deliberation regarding economic development negotiations. We're now going into closed session. Okay, we'll reconvene into regular session. Is there any action to be taken? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I move to authorize the city manager or her designee to sign all documents necessary to sell the approximate 0 0.334 acres of real property situated at Lot 3, Block A of the J.W. King Survey, abstract number 696, to Integrity Group LLC for $500,000 with a 365-day inspection period. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Motion carries unanimously. We have a motion to Move adjourn. To adjourn. Second. Motion to second to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. aye.
Those say nay. Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you all.